Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We would like to welcome you all to All Pakistan Tech and Art Festival 2021, organized by GCUACM Student Chapter, Lahore. The title of our webinar today is Building Responsible AI, Explainable and Interpretable Machine Learning Models in Azure, AWS, and GCP. Artificial intelligence holds a great promise for mankind. Enterprises, education, government, public policy, building knowledge economy, and data-driven decision-making. Artificial intelligence holds a great promise for mankind. Enterprises, education, government, public policy, building knowledge economy, and data-driven decision-making. We see the emergence of cognitive computing in different walks of life. However, intelligence is still far from being answered. In this session, different tools and techniques, including FairLearn, What If, and SageMaker, clarify for transparency about how ML models arrive at their predictions will be discussed. The knowledge provided in this session is essential for people working in regulated industries such as finance and healthcare and the public sector. Our today's guest is going to be Dr. Adnan Masood. He's an artificial intelligence researcher, visiting scholar at Stanford AI Lab, software architect, Microsoft Regional Director, and MVP, the most valuable professional for artificial intelligence. As Chief AI Architect at UST, Dr. Masood collaborates with Stanford Artificial Intelligence Lab, MITC Sale, and led a team of data scientists and engineers building artificial intelligence solutions to provide business value and insights that affect a range of businesses, products, and initiatives. So he has been a trusted advisor to the C-suite, from Fortune 500 companies to startups. Author of several data science books, Dr. Adnan th teaches that data science at Park University and has taught, taught Windows WCF courses at UCSD. He is an international speaker to academic and technology conferences, code camps, and user groups. Dr. Masood volunteers as STEM robotics coach for elementary and middle school students. Now, without any further delay, I'd like to invite our guest, Dr. Adnan Masood, to begin with the webinar. Um, good afternoon. I hope you guys can hear me and also see my screen. So I'm sharing my screen over here. And uh, please let me know if uh, you can't see it. Hopefully you can see me as well. Is, am I audible and uh, can you see my screen? Yes, you yes, are. Yes, yes. All set. All right. OK, so let's go ahead and start. I think I have about uh, 80 minutes now, and uh, we have a lot of content to cover. Um, I'll try to, uh, because the nature of the topic is very much about responsible AI and how do you explain artificial intelligence. And I'm assuming most of my audience are either students or working professionals. So I'll try to be as concrete as I can and try to explain what are the reasons why you need responsible AI. Uh, so there's a lot of background material which needs to be covered. And then we'll talk about some of the techniques and uh, technologies underneath it. But in order to understand like the actual reason why responsible AI is so important, you actually need to understand some of the use cases and case studies associated with that. So that would be what we'll be covering like, hopefully uh, uh, the next uh, eight minutes. All right. Uh, and I'll have towards the end. So if you have any, uh, you can hold off your questions till the end. That'd be great. If there's a pressing problem, uh, feel free to send me a message uh, on the chat, and then one of the administrators and organizers will let me know. Uh, Urdu ke liye ye hai ke, uh, the topic of interest jo hai, isme zyada jo terminologies hain, jo istilahat hain, wo Anglesi mein. To phir wo agar us, main Urdu mein bolna shuru karunga, to wo ek malhuba sa ban jayega. So it's probably better if I stick to one language, which will be English. But if there is something you guys want me to 
रिपीट और किस चीज का आपको तर्जुमे की जरूरत हो या कोई ऐसी चीज हो जो आप चाहें कि मैं उसको उर्दू में भी बयान करूं तो आप मुझे बताइएगा तो मैं आई कैन ट्राई डूइंग दैट लेकिन चूंकि टॉपिक ऑफ इंटरेस्ट इज एक्चुअली एंड टर्मोलॉजीज आर मोस्टली इन इंग्लिश जो असलाहत है वो अंग्रेजी में है तो ये बेहतर है कि मैं एक ही लैंग्वेज पे स्टिक करके रखूँ विच विल बी इंग्लिश अदरवाइज ये उर्दिश का जो है वो मलबूबा सा बन जाएगा थोड़ा तो Forward with that. I thank you for the kind and again, thank you very much for inviting me to speak. Uh, I got a contract for UST. I'm a visiting scholar at Stanford University, and also a Microsoft Research Director and uh, MVP for AI. What it means is that it gives me a very good purview of what's coming in the industry. I've been working in AI industry for a while now. Um, a while, as in uh, AI being around. How long AI has been around in the mainstream? And uh, I also work with CCL, which is an MIT AI lab, and I've authored uh, several books on the topic. Uh, one of my latest book is on automated machine learning. Right here, uh, it's available on Amazon and other places if you want to learn more about automated machine learning. Uh, I frequently speak on this this topic, so hopefully this information will be useful for you. I've recently done a live webinar on uh, AI governance and with my colleagues. So you can also get this by talk uh, if you're interested in uh, learning more about uh, what is AI, AI governance and fairness and trust, um, how it works in the industry. So most of the contents I'll talk about today are made available for informational purposes, so no, not for commercial purposes, because the copyright belongs to the specific owners. It's not uh, the contents are aggregated from multiple different sources. So I've cited um, most of the contents wherever I can, and uh, make sure that they are not used for commercial purposes. All right. So as you guys can see my screen and hear me clearly, uh, these are some of the key areas of uh, focus on our AI. Natural language machine learning, deep learning, uh, ML ops, uh, simulation and reinforcement learning, automated machine learning, embodied AI, and responsible AI. So uh, the reason I'm talking to you guys is because I wanted to part some of the, my knowledge with you and explain to you why it is important that AI is AI. There are some of the key areas, but, but uh, what are the uh, main, I guess, uh, commercial applications for that, and why responsible AI? I think that's what the the theme of the topic today is. But most importantly, you guys are students and you are going in the industry uh, pretty soon. Uh, if you are uh, you're going to the journey of becoming a professional AI machine learning developer, if you are becoming a data scientist moving forward, how would you apply your skills? towards any of these uh, areas and what are the areas in there and also on top of that what is how does responsible ai play a role in you becoming a commercial software engineer or a commercial data scientist or a person who is working in, within an enterprise either within financial technology or healthcare or uh, maybe retail or manufacturing there are a bunch of different uh, verticals where you are, might be working what would be the area where uh, you can apply natural language processing or machine comprehension or automated machine learning or reinforcement learning and how responsible AI would uh, change that. So these are some of the areas where um, AI gets used or gets applied. And you can also see from a business and industry perspective, it's, it's huge, right? So um, manufacturing is using it for everything. Cost reduction, customer experience, risk management, industry disruption. These are some of the very uh, well known facts in the industry that now AI and machine learning is actually being embedded as part of the entire ecosystem for software engineering. So, the reason I'm uh, bringing this up now with you is because AI and software engineering, as you are moving forward, are going to become one. So, it's a bold statement, but that's what we are seeing nowadays uh, in. But in development, software development here in the US, I, I in Tampa, Florida. But there is, uh, we, we are seeing more and more of this trend happening when software engineering and AI are, are kind of becoming a one uh, facet of your development activity within an enterprise. Uh, when we are, people are building applications for uh, any kind of enterprise application, including recommendation systems, or you're building ERP, or even if you are working with healthcare. Uh, recommendation systems or collaborative filtering or uh, things like uh, where you, uh, you have the filtering happening to uh, provide triage for, for ERs or uh, any kind of uh, 
activity where you are applying any kind of decision making that automated decision making or augmented intelligence is becoming a very uh, regularly becoming a part of your software engineering practice which is a part of your larger ai ecosystem so artificial intelligence as you know can be classified into multiple different categories unsupervised learning supervised learning reinforcement learning augmented intelligence but as a as a practice of software engineering when you're building algorithms they are riddled with bias so bias is a topic which we will discuss in detail and we'll talk about some of the definitions of the things we will uh, we'll see in, in in next slides but moving forward if you can take one thing away from this talk is that ai and software engineering are interchangeably being used when you are building software uh, for intelligent system as well as you are building software for regular uh, erp erm systems or even uh, for your general you know let's imagine you are making a uh, a shopping cart for a bookstore you would use uh, ai to be able to find out what are the recommendations for those books, are the are they, what are the anomalies, what are the outliers? How do you find the explanation for the outliers? What can you do in those cases? So it's now becoming much more and more a part of your general software development life cycle. All right. Uh, so let's talk about our abstract today, explainable, interpretable, and uh, transparent machine learning. So what is uh, explainable uh, machine learning? Are you, all of you, must have heard of this whole idea of black boxes, right? So most of the real data sets have some sort of bias. What kind of bias? Uh, you can have data sets which have gender bias, race bias. It may have a built-in bias against the representative group. So most of you who have already studied computer science and you have already seen some of the statistical anomalies within those data sets are familiar with the idea that the bias exists in the data set. So how do we get rid of the bias? In order to get rid of the bias, you might want to balance the data set. It's not always the ideal use case when you want to get rid of the bias. Bias can be a really important source of information within the data set. So uh, sometimes bias is really important. For example, if you are doing breast cancer analysis and there's a huge bias against the female gender, that is for a purpose because that's a biological fact. So you don't want to balance it. If you want to make it 50 50, that would be ridiculous. And you probably want to keep it the way the bias is. But if there is a some sort of a recommendation engine or a loan prediction engine or some sort of a risk analysis you are doing based on the uh, loan uh, uh, being given or even a recidivism, for example, for your uh, uh, parole offices, in those cases, you probably want to see hey, um, it doesn't make any sense that this is specific demographic is getting most of the sentences or most a longer period of parole. So in, in those cases, you, what you probably want to do is to not have uh, uh, to have it balanced out. So then your, your values are reflected as part of your, um, uh, your, your algorithm and your model actually reflects your values. So nowadays, all the major platforms, including your cloud platforms in GCP, Azure, or AWS, offer the capabilities to be able to de-bias your system or at least find out explaining Um, I realize that I have been uh, talking a lot about these things, and it's a huge topic, and I have a lot to cover in this uh, in next 80 minutes. So I just want to make sure that you know that you're drinking from a fire hose here. Um, there's a lot to, and if there are some terminologies uh, which are new to you, just bear with me. Uh, hopefully, by the and one by one what these things are and hopefully that will uh, become clear uh, so far. So it's all the individuals. Uh, it, that's why I have to present this trigger warning. Uh, the talk discusses things like racism and um, so those will be triggered for, triggered for people. And that, the reason for that is not because I wanted to add that in there. It's an inherent nature of this talk that those topics needs to be discussed because it's about explainability, fairness, and bias. So those uh, are subject matters within this talk. So that would come up. All right. So before I start with the whole idea of AI ethics, anyone have any questions so far? Um, am I going too fast, too slow? Do you want me to uh, change anything before I jump into the AI ethics? 
Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Sam. I was just want to have a request that would you please use kind of for apologies for the audience because I think they would not catch up with the discussion. So this is just a request. Thank you very much. OK, sure. I will try to go as simple as possible, if not simpler. Uh, so what are AI ethics? AI ethics are a set of values, principles, and techniques that employees widely accepted as standards for right and wrong to guide moral conduct. Uh, Alan Turing Institute has this definition. So ethics is a, a more, I guess, a subjective thing where people define ethics differently. Ethics, um, a, a set of ethics which applies to one spe specific part of group of people may not apply to the other group of people. So then it becomes hard for uh, us to decide what ethical and moral values are. But as you distill it down, it becomes much more uh, easier, I guess, from an AI and machine learning systems to be able to talk about these. And if you're building an ethical AI, a system is individual and collective well-being, and enhances our ability to tackle those challenges. That's the goal for having an ethical AI system. Anything which is working in be to benefit humans and to help humans uh, gain other goals. Uh, larger goals. So one of the things I can talk about is cognitive capabilities. Um, for example, you have a person who has a task that he gets papers and he gets the papers and he gets the data and he gets the data in the computer. So it can be that this is his dream job, but it can be that it is difficult. It is that ये काम कंप्यूटर बहुत अच्छे तरीके से कर सकता है आप उसको ओसीआर करके उसको कॉग्निटिव ओसीआर लगा के आप उसको स्कैन करके वो इनपुट उसका जो है वो कंप्यूटर में डाल दें तो डिजिटाइजेशन का जो प्रोसेस है वो बहुत आसान हो जाएगा नाउ दैट इज अ रीजन व्हेन यू वांट टू ऑटोमेट और ट्रांसफॉर्म स्टफ यू वांट टू यूज ह्यूमन कैपेबिलिटीज टू द बेस्ट ऑफ द कैपेबिलिटीज सो कॉग्निटिव जो कैपेबिलिटीज हैं वो वेस्ट हो रही हैं जो काम इस तरह addressed. So what are the ethical issues which are surrounding the technology today? So one of them is, for example, hate speech, misinformation, uh, fake news, weaponization of technologies like AI. So when you weaponize the technologies, what happens is like, imagine AI-driven drones, right? That's a big issue. AI-driven uh, technologies which, are, which can be used to cause harm to people. A right infringement, surveillance, so if you have yeah, just surveying on people, so into different cameras and trying to figure out who is likely to be a specific group of people, and then applying surveillance on top of it. Um, unfair outcome like discrimination and prejudice. So I don't know if you've heard of this, but um, Microsoft has stopped selling the uh, computer vision capabilities, the face rec facial recognition capabilities to police departments um, after the protests here in the U.S. Uh, last year. So. Uh, this is a big move. Actually, after that, um, IBM, Amazon, everybody have stopped selling those products to police departments here in the U.S. where you can r recognize until there are AI governance rules are in place to make sure that people are not being profiled unjustly. So you, you can see these uh, things which are happening in the mainstream uh, actually trickle it down to the uh, uh, to the technology space, right? So now. Uh, I've spoken about bias before. Right? What is bias? Bias is systematically favoring one group rather than another. That's the definition of bias. It defined in terms of like how you can prefer and have a bias against something. All of us have bias. We all have a bias or a bias or a bias. वो एक आपके जान में मौजूद होती है कि एक तरजीह दी जाएगी चीजों के ऊपर। तो आपके सामने अगर एक साब जब वो आई डोंट नो एक कॉग्निटिव बायस जो पीछे से आपकी बनी होती है, वो मौजूद होती है। The idea is that you recognize that bias. You cannot get rid of the bias completely, but you have to recognize that bias and you have to counteract based on that. All right. So example, for for instance, if somebody comes to uh, conduct an interview, you, you are conducting an interview, somebody can, comes to take a test. 
इफ इट्स अ मैन और वुमेन एक खातून आती है इंटरव्यू देने के लिए और एक साहब आते हैं इंटरव्यू देने के लिए आपका इंटरव्यू है सॉफ्टवेयर डेवलपमेंट के लिए तो आप इस बेसिस पे जज नहीं करेंगे लोगों को कि एक जो है वो उसमें जो है खातून इंटरव्यू दे रही है या आदमी इंटरव्यू दे रहे हैं आप इस बात पर जज करेंगे कि उनकी एक्सपर्टीज या स्किल्स क्या है सो आपकी जो बायस है यू हैव टू गेट रेड ऑफ दैट बायस यू हैव टू नॉट बी बायस for or against any of the genders and these are the things which i go bottoms have the thing because we have those things so we take those things and we transfer our knowledge and our data over to an algorithm and algorithm and systems we build actually become biased and that's what we want we're trying to get rid of we are trying to not have that prob- problem when um, this algorithms and the and the things which we train have bias but rather they are just an equitable treatment for individuals and groups they provide you an a fair assessment of um, how and a system would look like it would not be biased towards anybody all right so this is the a very fundamental concept of bias i hope i have not put everybody to sleep but you guys are following what i'm talking about in terms of bias and fairness and why these are the the problems the reason it is that uh, when you are thinking about the thinking about these key consideration in fairness you have to focus on the uh, why you need to put when you are building machine learning system why you have to put these things in uh, context all right so uh, when you are doing some model design and our machine learning model design and implementation uh, it can cause harm and this is some of the use cases shortly how can it cause harm uh, if you don't consider the fairness and responsible ai in in the picture and you have to ask these questions as to how you, the model you are building it can disproportionate harm how you can understand the machine model, learning models are working and if they are actually gathering some sort of bias in there and what would happen if these things will go wrong what would happen if uh, for example if you are building an ai which is supposed to be disbursing loans to people giving loans to people and all of a sudden it says no this person lives in this specific area of lahore or or some place and i'll give loans to the people who live in this area but not to this area and that's a discrimination and it shouldn't be able to do that right algorithm should not have that kind of power and we see now and again it sounds kind of ridiculous but you see now and again um, that this happening uh, with our algorithm they become racist the reason why they're racist not actually makes them that way all right so how do you build fairness in artificial intelligence so in order to build a fair intelligent um yeah system there are some of the considerations which are fairly well cited in literature one of them is equity uh, the second one is representativeness and the third one is bias so equity is does the model work better or the model failures are significantly worse consequences for one group than another so the models have equity which means all different groups are represented and then when you are trying to get an algorithm to tell you whether i should hire someone a person a or person b there's an equity there which means it's not um, it, it does not give you overwhelm overwhelmingly uh, against group a versus group b so for example if i ask i need to hire a software engineer and the distribution of the data set major distribution alone ki wo hai 50 50 and all of a sudden whenever you get a result from that it always give you name and all the guys right that is not equity सिर्फ आदमियों को जो है हायर करने के लिए आप आई गॉट जो मॉडल है जो एच आर मॉडल रिकमेंड कर रहा है हायरिंग के लिए लोगों को तो दैट अगर वो सिर्फ आपको ऐसा डाटा देना शुरू कर दे जिसमें सिर्फ आदमी हो तो दैट्स नॉट एक्विटी राइट दैट्स नॉट एक्विटेबल आई गॉट सो नाउ इफ यू लुक एट सेज मेकर और इफ यू लुक एट एजर एमओ फेयर लर्न और इन जीसीपी द व्हाट इफ टू दे ऑल प्रोवाइड यू दैट फीचर कंसीडरेशन प्लॉट वेयर यू कैन एक्चुअली सी व्हिच फीचर has the most important results and i'll show you some of those graphs shortly uh, which feature actually gives you more information about that all right so that's where the explainability and auditability of a of a model comes into play uh, you guys are software engineers you guys are machine learning people you are data scientists you probably are already looking at uh, things like you know how do we define so you uh, if i talk about Let's say the regression does the regression based random forest, um, or um, even things like uh, uh, any kind of algorithm which is uh, uh, which is using 
uh, de dense layers, for example, convolutional neural networks, recurrent neural networks, or, or neural networks in general, you will know that these algorithms are very much in aligned with uh, a black box model. Why? Because it's very hard to interpret those models, very hard to explain those models in a human terms. And the reason is uh, that there are so many different layers in that model that when the outcome comes, it, it's not very obvious and evident. So the explainability of the model is not there. So uh, for the non-technical terms, I can't tell that this layer and this softness method and this specific uh, uh, gradient is not giving me the results which is equitable or non-equitable. And that creates the whole problem of black box models. So explainability of the model should be there. And that raises the other question about auditability, like whether you can uh, query and get results and be able to present that to the governance and order uh, people within your enterprise who are responsible to make sure that there's equity and transparency and fairness within your models. All right. So this raises the whole concern about AI governance. How would you be making um, uh, AI in a way that it's secure, it's transparent, and it's fair? And it requires a lot of, it has a lot of implementation specifically in the area of healthcare, insurance, automotive industry, education, banking, because these are the areas which impact people the most. Right? So for example, in, in education, now AI in the US is being used to grade essays. And if it starts grading essays in different ways for uh, middle income people to the low income people to high income people, that would not be right. Okay, it, in banking, if you can start giving loans to people who are um, a, a specific race or gender or uh, people of faith, then that would be incorrect. In healthcare, that would not be right. Um, recently, there's a lawsuit going on here in New York where uh, some healthcare outcomes for African-Americans were very different from the healthcare outcomes for, um, for their white counterparts, which is, of course, uh, not right. There's some people are being actually dumped into the hospital system, which was not giving them the right outcome uh, because they were people of color. So those kind of discrepancies are very bad and you should not have them as part of your system. And that's why uh, these things are required having a governance framework around this. Um, a proper governance framework if you're building one for intelligence, uh, as you can see in Google and in Microsoft as well as in Azure, uh, I'm sorry, as in um, GCP, AWS and, A AWS and Azure, the data bias, auditability, uh, performance and drift, the robustness of, an, of a method uh, and time, security, and cost. These are some of the main concerns when you're building a governance framework or using a governance framework as part of this. And, and AI governance is really important because you want to build a public understanding and trust in these AI technologies, right? It has to be explainable, it has to be transparent, it has to be fair. And then organizations have to make sure that the, the governance and transparency and communication and traction are put into place for this kind of decision making. So AI driven decision making or data driven decision making it's 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 really important that the accountability accountability ethical ai and the fairness transparency and the robustness system is uh, all within this uh, purview of the things all right so these are some of the governance and standard and the key ideas which are supposed to be as part of your uh, ecosystem should be there okay now uh, this is the artificial intelligence life cycle as you can see that um, one of the end-to-end -end system will show you that this, these are the things which happens as part of your end-to-end uh, -end AI lifecycle. You define a problem, you do the data collection, you do the data processing, uh, you do create your model, you do model tuning, evaluation, deployment, maintenance. These are all different uh, parts of your data science lifecycle, all right? Um, I'll take a quick pause over here. I want to understand how many of you actually know about uh, data science lifecycle and the things I'm talking about as a data, data scientist or a data engineer or a machine learning engineer. How many of you actually understand that, that that these things are part of your machine life cycle? Because when you're building an AI system, you're not just building a different notebook. You're building a lot more than that. You're trying to build a diverse end-to-end -end system which has this all these different components together. All right, so by a show of hands, let's say, how many of you actually are familiar with the data science life cycle? Thank you. 
I can see for some reason that the show of hands over here. So an organizer can tell me probably how familiar people are with the idea of uh, data science lifecycle. So most of the attendees are, are grad students. So some of them have, have studied AI in their courses. Some of them studied machine learning in their courses, but some of, some of them studied in fourth semester, sixth semester. They will yet to study these courses in the coming uh, semesters. So right now we have our audience who are who are to explain this model in more like a more simplified way. OK. Thank you. All right. So it's like you have a diverse uh, set of attendees where people are familiar with, are familiar with the idea of uh, data science life cycle is something that you want to study if you are looking for working in the industry uh, in a, I guess, in an effective manner. Because just working on a specific problem might not take you all the way to um, understanding the deployment of a of a large system. So system design and system thinking is now becoming a much more uh, wide area where you don't just don't work in a specific silo, but rather you have to understand the end to end implementation of a system. So th these are the things where you have to have this key question to ask of how the potential bias in the algorithm is actually uh, causing an issue. So for example, the algorithm may have a, uh, it during the model creation or maybe the model drift at, at that point when the new data comes in, that's when the bias is actually happening. So these are all different things. And now the, the bias actually is coming in multiple different shapes. So you have biases, which is uh, protected attributes like race, age, age, gender, sexual orientation, religion, socioeconomic status. These are different uh, protected attributes. Here in the, the US, uh, in the United States, we have the rules against are, are doing any kind of discrimination based on these areas, uh, which means your algorithms cannot discriminate uh, giving somebody uh, a mortgage based on their age or their gender or their sexual orientation or their religion or their socioeconomic status. Uh, these are not uh, okay, and this is uh, a federal crime to actually discriminate against these things. So these are protected attributes, right? So. But on top of that, you also have to think about the other uh, considerations. So for example, are you solving a relevant problem? Sometimes bias is not relevant to that. Uh, like I give you the healthcare and the breast cancer example. And breast cancer, there's a huge bias against uh, for a gender, and that's for biological reason. Also, if it's adding the value, uh, if it's uh, accurate, timely, actionable results, it's providing you those. And it, it is also providing and uh, beside fairness, if you are for like performance consideration and other things associated with that. Right. So I think some transparency. I think AI, as we discussed, it talks about how right, how fair, and how just is your AI output, and what is the income, uh, what is the outcome, and what is the impact for that. Now, the ethical AI brings you the idea of interpretable AI. Right, so we'll talk about a few things, explainable AI, interpretable AI, uh, also the bias fairness. Uh, there's a lot of terminologies in this case, uh, but as we walk through, I've given you some of the definitions earlier, and you will see them moving forward as well. So interpretable AI is important. Why? Because the black box models don't scale. They are not good for uh, computability. They don't work well in, in practice. As you can see, the accuracy versus interpret interpretability trade-off here. Uh, so you have the more a model is simpler. I've got the simplest model over linear regression, decision trees, k nearest neighbor, neighbor, etc. accuracy is much higher. They don't provide the best accuracy, but the interpretability is much higher. So, I'm asking you to some data things. So, I'm just trying to find out. 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 I'm just trying or if you can further split it, you can explain it. Your decision tree is very easy to explain. But when it comes to deep neural networks or SVM, support vector machine, etc., to explain it is not as easy. But in the, in the end, the results are much better because now you're working with lots of different features and a lot of different attributes, which are not easy to encode in your linear machine decision trees. So you can see there's a trade-off. You can either have really good interpretability and really good accuracy. And you will see in literature that this trade-off is not necessarily um, 
and it's it's not mutually exclusive to have explainability as well as accuracy. So you can have both. It's just you will have to work a little harder to make those black boxes open, all right? So this is a very uh, famous quote by Elon Musk. Um, he says the rate of improvement is really dramatic in AI and machine learning, but we have to ensure that the advent of super intelligence is not which is symbiotic with humanity. The single biggest biggest existential threat we face and the most pressing one. That's what he's talked about AI. It's in, in his book, um, and he's talked about this publicly in some interviews as well. It's a uh, the artificial intelligence being the one of the biggest existential threats. The reason is not because it's going to become uh, an arms race, but rather it's because it's it's not explainable. And if it's not explainable, there are certain risks it poses. So I'm going to jump into some of the risks here uh, from AI perspective to to make sure you understand what are the different components of these risks, so we can then talk about how can we mitigate those risks. Okay, so let's jump into that. So here's uh, some of the examples. Bank of America confronts AI black box with fraud detection efforts. So there were some fraud detection efforts which were uh, being um, held at Bank of America where when you're detecting the fraud, if your model is not explainable, then it has far reaching impact. So for example, it can uh, subconsciously or uh, have a cognitive bias internally, which is targeting the low income folks or uh, people with uh, bad credit or people with um, uh, who, who are, Systematically being removed from the financial system. You have a campaign scandal where you have the regulators were thinking about that. But actually, it was uh, an issue when they were actually going into the large Facebook accounts and getting all this information out. The killer robot, uh, uh, the AI ethical concerns, Microsoft has dropped some of the deals based on that. Then you have uh, several emerging risks based on it. So AI black box is a problem. And as a future software engineer, machine learning developer, as a data scientist for the future, uh, you guys as students and grad students and the people need to understand why it is a, is a problem, not only why it is a problem, but also the in-depth understanding of what are the different attributes within that model which might be causing a problem, right? And in order to look at that, the way you will, See, and you will get um, how it actually uh, represents itself as part of the software development life cycle, as part of the data center cycle. And in that, what are the features which are being uh, being used, and what pa what part of your so, so your data science life cycle is actually ha is incorporating bias in there, and what how can you expose the fairness in there? Right? There's no one answer for all of these questions, but rather it will be, depend on your model, and it will depend on what kind of data sets you are working with and where your model drift comes into play. Uh, this is a very recent example when uh, you had uh, natural language generation, uh, GPT-2 of OpenAI. Uh, they said that they would, not, uh, they would not disclose this, right? There was a lot of things it could, uh, these models can generate as part of fake text, which looks almost like the humans have written those things, right? So they, they consider that is too good are too talkative in the public domain. They would write these paragraphs, which are so accurate, so well written, and it looks like it's a human as written, but it's not a human. So, what could be a potential problem because of this animal? A potential problem for that could be that you can have these fake bots uh, creating a counter narrative, fake news, and you, it's not. It's like you can create fake profiles for people without doing human intervention. So nobody has to sit there and type all these things up. But rather, these narratives can be generated just by the bots, which are automatically trying to uh, create abusive languages or try to create counter narrative on a state level or or more of a. Uh, they can be anti vaxxers or any of those. Yeah, French. start propagating. This is a huge arms race within uh, the community when they are trying to stop this from happening. All right, so this is a uh, so some of the uh, use cases I have put together here uh, where I will talk about so bias and fairness. Uh, these two people, these two individuals, uh, petty theft is uh, is just you know like a small. Uh, somebody steals a small item. It's called a petty theft. But the risk of parole, this people getting a parole is very different. And algorithm here will see uh, Vernon here as a low risk, and it will see other person as a high risk based on their 
ethnicity and their race, uh, which is an algorithm deciding whether who gets to go home and who stays in the jail. Okay, that's really bad because you don't want to discriminate based on their race. There's there's no point. Even though if you look at the data here, uh, the Brisha did not have a, accumulated as much uh, uh, criminal history as compared to one, but because of the racial profile, the government ended up, uh, ended up saying that, you know, the risk of giving parole to Vernon is much, much lower than being depression. And that's uh, that came up in the study of, of algorithms which are used to give parole. So that's where we have to make sure that this doesn't happen. The second risk is around uh, what we call robustness or adversarial attack in machine learning. And those of you who are studying machine learning in detail are probably uh, familiar with the idea of what why is the security risk. So algorithms are prone to adversarial attacks that undermine the security of the safety critical systems. So if you change a few things within an image, uh, even some a few pixels, it can completely fool machine learning algorithms. Now, what is the challenge here? The challenge could be that you may have a stop sign and it becomes changed to speed limit 30 just by these small modifications. And now your automated car is now going to run somebody else. ٹھیک اور اس کو جو ہے ڈیل کرنا جو ہے ایک پوری ایک سائنس ہے تاکہ جو اے آئی الگورتھم ہے وہ پرون نہ ہو اس کے ایکسپلینیبلٹی آف الگورتھم آر ویری امپورٹنٹ کہ الگورتھم ایکسپلین کرے کہ وائی ڈز اٹ تھنک دیٹ دس ٹاپ سائن از اسپیڈ لمٹ تھرٹی If you just train a convolution neural network and it is doing really, really good in classification, but it doesn't explain to you, if you don't tell the algorithm why it is making a decision that this is not a stop sign, the speed limit sign, then you can never fix that. You can't fix it until you have explainability or interpretability as a part of model now. So black box models are not really suitable and pose a lot of risk and security when it comes to human interaction. So I hope that makes sense. Okay. Um, Now, next part is uh, control. So you want to make sure that uh, if you're building conversational AI and stuff like that, that would, um, it controls the narrative or not. This, right? So um, I saw this block of Tay and it started to become racist and uh, fashion. Just and it doesn't start uh, blending out all these kind of things. And uh, this kind of behavior is, uh, of course, Uh, and public discourse is unacceptable and uh, predict emerging behavior. And that, that has to be controlled right away. And Microsoft had to bring down the bot. But what it shows is that if you are learning over public corpuses and you have adversarial entities which are trying to retrain and try to make your algorithm go all crazy, then it can happen that it, the risk, uh, risk can cause that the, the problem of learning from a large corpuses. And that should be controlled. So Microsoft had to bring down the bot and then do a lot of uh, media repair in this case. But that's uh, a very important case study that online learning or uh, the batch learning um, have its merits. And you should actually go with having the matrices we are measuring um, these kind of capabilities within the system to ensure that it doesn't become racist or homophobic. Or anything. And that's part of your system. And another risk is that right? So automation, how it can impact and be. That's a whole topic uh, separately for about the uh, AI and the future of work, which is not necessarily our topic of discussion here, but that's uh, another one of the risks, okay? Uh, the fifth one is the societal risk, where you will see that uh, whoever wins the AI is going to become the ruler of the world. And uh, these issues are, uh, societal issues are happening. And you can see the fake news being one. It's being combated as we speak, but uh, deep fakes or these things 
are part of explainable AI and they are societal risk. Uh, there's another societal risk here where uh, you have the value of the AI system is, this is a very famous problem. If you are a computer science graduate, you know that. It's called a trolley problem where if a car is coming and there, it has to choose between killing two people versus one people, one person, what would it choose? If it's old people versus just young of your uh, self-driving cars. And that's something which is uh, still being debated, still being discussed. And I don't know if there's a, there's a very good answer for society, uh, for the problem, uh, a trolley problem yet. Now, arms race is a big problem within AI where you have, your people are trying to build these um, um, armies of robots and then uh, AI, using AI to create um, different kind of uh, systems which can become adversaries, including cybersecurity risks associated with that. And this is all uh, actually happens as part of your adversarial learning system. And I talked to you about er that earlier, like how you can take a panda, add a little noise to the image, and you can see that Im image doesn't really change. If you look at the anime, and but if you run this, it's any classified. It was given, then it's not given as panda, but it was he's given. So now it has a full that's an invasion attack on your classifier. When you're building a classifier, this can cause a problem with it. Um, Self-driving cars. You have heard about the Tesla crash uh, a while ago. The, the new crashes also have happened, and it it wasn't able to recognize a trailer um, and then ran into it. Right. So that was uh, a problem with. It tries to merge and change lanes, and the person was engaged in an autonomous manner, and it actually crashed into the car. So the explainability of algorithm really is important in that case when you uh, uh, when you're building this up. So the risk level is not across. One of the risks could be if you're working with social credit system, or if you're working with um, virtual assistants, and um, if you're working with autonomous vehicles, those are high risk issues, right? Uh, exam scoring is a big um, high risk problem. Surgical robots, of course, you don't want any kind of uh, non-explainable AI in, in case of surgery. For example, if somebody decides to say, I will amputate their leg, and the algorithm says, because I'm telling you to amputate the leg, uh, the person will be like, why are you amputating my leg? You have to give them a reason of why uh, you are doing a surgery on a person. Uh, if Why is it required? Because a doctor can explain, but the same way the algorithm needs to be able to explain if you are using an algorithm for surgical robots. So relevant and representative example, uh, explanation of these models is really important to, to get understanding around what's happening, what is the rationale behind a specific decision, medical decision which is being made. Now, when it comes to our defects or product recommendation, if you get a wrong recommendation for a product, that's not end of the world. That's okay. It's not the high risk issue. But uh, if you're working with uh, high risk use cases, that's important to have the understanding of that. All right. I work with the Stanford very closely, and we have launched this uh, AI unbiased explainable AI algorithm for health and wealth to provide the efficiency, value, and delivery of healthcare to people. So. Um, this is a way of being able to understand from complex explanation of coverage documents how you can uh, understand what they actually mean by providing an explainable taxonomy around this. And ex explainable AI and responsible AI is really good. Have this way to explain that, right? So you have to be able to have that trust of the result, understanding as part of explainable model and interpretable model. A domain expert can learn and correct errors and can uh, reenact things of demands. And a model itself has fairness, the inclusiveness, the accountability, the privacy and sec security, uh, reliability and transparency in place. So these, this is what makes your ethical and explainable model a responsible model which can work. So these are some of the principles, like it, it's fair whenever you're making a model, it's inclusive, it's transparent, it's accountable. Uh, it considers the reliability and safety, and then it's private and secure. So the customer data doesn't actually go out. So these are the, the different uh, elements of the responsible AI. So I've, I've been talking about this this whole time about responsible AI. You're like, what is the reason? Why is he talking about it? Nobody has, is this actually a thing? Like, do I really, I'm going to use it in the real world? 
it's not i think uh, that would become uh, a reason like it would become a norm to actually do this uh, in other countries uh, including in uh, united states and europe this has become a norm to talk about ai regulations and not just talk about them but actually enact them as part of the organization and uh, all large organizations now have ethics board ai um, regulations where they are trying to apply that so uh, for example machines uh, that learn uh, the brussels and uh, european union have proposed a bill around this european commission uh, you can see at the bottom here uh, they have a, a, a proposal for a regulation around this uh, there is the ftc in your access have a, a truth fairness and equity for other companies use of ai there's a draft in place uh, there's also congress had a regarding accountability act of 2019 which was presented uh, and that's going to make algorithm accountable So the regulations are already there. If you are working for a couple to explain why a model is doing what it is doing, and those regulations are really important uh, to follow because otherwise you risk, like any other regulations, you will see risk that. Day. Okay. So I'll take a quick pause over here. Um, I'm almost one hour into my presentation. I have about 20 more minutes to go before I start taking questions. Any concerns, questions, comments at this point? Uh, it was a nice question, sir. My question is, you are telling us that AI should be explainable. But right now we have more sophisticated algorithms like deep learning and CNN and RNN. They are very, very hard to explain, yet they, they produce very magnificent results. So how would, how, what are the specific techniques? How uh, would we be able to elaborate them, explain them, interpret them? Or it's just uh, just it will remain a black box. How far we are successful? That's a brilliant question. Thank you for asking this. So the question is, uh, most of the great algorithm, great algorithms, the, the good algorithms like uh, your uh, convolutional networks or uh, recurrent neural networks or uh, BERT or Elmo, uh, these are different deep learning models, transformer models as part of NLP. They are very um complex to understand because of the very nature of them being using uh neural networks so when you, it's a neural network you have multiple different layers and they could be like five of different levels of of, of uh, different uh, neural and you can also know some you have five layers and your soft method at the end that's what you use to be able to truncate and develop the results uh, those architectures and neural architectures i mean not all the architectures of perceptron right perceptron is the easiest example of a neural network but if you have a uh, complex neural networks then it becomes very hard to be able to understand them and most people who build them actually don't understand how they are performing because uh, the uh, output is based on the training of the algorithm so we will talk about some of the techniques and uh, they think which techniques concierge or in black box algorithm ko explain karne mein kaam aate so i to believe guidelines and these are the guidelines for what is ethically aligned AI and they actually published this ethically aligned design. A paper is available publicly. You can download it from this link. Um, general principles, which are, are defined as like what would be a part of any ethical AI, would be human rights, well-being, data agency, effect, transparency, accountability, awareness, misuse, competence. So a lot of countries have published this national. I'll quickly go over the entire European Union, China, Denmark, etc. And um, also, US has some of those which I talked about right here, uh, as in uh, Algorithm Accountability Act and FTC has some of those. Okay, so I'll move on. Um, I've, I think I've spoken enough about model interpretability being important, right? So, all the major people have talked about why model interpretability is important and why the failures are there. So, it's a summary of what different failures have happened. Um, uh, I've talked about some of them, including sexism in Amazon AI hiring. So we found out that Amazon AI, when they hire people, there's a huge sexism going on over there. This is uh, an example of deep neural network, right? So embedding word embedding, you're familiar with the idea of how we can take large uh, corpuses of text and then create word embeddings out of this. So here the word embeddings shows. I'm going to 
which is your set as a visa different things, and then ask things like he's a doctor and says she's a nurse, which is racist, right? So there's tons of female doctors. Why is saying she is to nurse? Uh, that's a racism. Uh, he's to architect, she's to interior design, designer, he's to realist, she's to feminist. These kind of things are, are racist algorithms. And uh, there are, um, there's a paper out there by Dr. James Zhao and a few other people from Stanford and other schools where they talk about uh, why, how do you debias word embeddings, right? So here is another one of the example. When you classify based on word embeddings, Hispanic, Asian, and white, you can see Hispanic, have a, a housekeeper is not as professions agents have a set of professions that what's a set of profession which is this is because you know you you see that administrative uh, things goes towards them more about um, uh, whites and asians and hispanics have more uh, uh, what i would call um, i guess laborer jobs which is uh, a representative of the data sets we have but that's not really uh, a fair example so for example if you start trying to use that for recommendation, you will say, recommend me a housekeeper. And then algorithm will think, oh, Hispanics makes a good housekeeper. So let's use, choose a Hispanic person. But that's not the capability you are looking for. The race is not a capability to say if somebody can be a good housekeeper or a bad housekeeper, right? So that's where algorithms can be biased. And I'll talk about how do you de-bias these things. All right? So these are some of the examples and I've covered some of these earlier. Now let's talk about techniques. So principles, I think we have, we have discussed in very, very detail. Now let's talk about techniques on how you can make machine learning interpretable, all right? So the techniques can be classified into multiple different areas. So you have tabular or structured data. Um, the One of the structured data can be explained using this, this technique called SHAP or Shapley values, right? So within Shapley values, you have tree explainer, you have deep explainer, track explainer, linear explainer. And you're mimicking. So mimicking techniques is when you try to create a proxy for the algorithm, and then it explains the learning model in a black box model in a, in a counter model, where it's using either decision trees, stochastic gradient descent, or a large GPM, or any of those techniques. And those techniques will be running as a mimicking of the existing uh, black box algorithm. So that is also used a proxy of an existing algorithm, as long as the results match very closely, gets used today. So you can take a model. Which is, uh, which is a non-black box model, and use it to explain a black box model. All right, so that's uh, one of the things uh, which is done today in, in audit, where you cannot present a neural network as your uh, as your interpretable model. You have to uh, use a non-neural network based model. So you take linear regression and just mimic this technique to achieve that. The third one is future permutation, and you will see in a second how future permutations can be. Use feature computation as computation features. As this feature, you can say this feature has the most impact on the result. All right. So feature permutation ki example, you can say that you have a model liya, black box model aapke baas, koi, um, loan dene ka model. So you have a AI ko train that you have to say that if you have a loan, and you have a loan ka return, jo hai, wo kya baaki probability. Hai? So this model is used एजुकेशन तो ये सारे जो फैक्टर्स हैं ये बनाते हैं आपकी डिफरेंट फीचर्स होंगे लेकिन उस अगर फीचर्स की लिस्ट में एक जगह लिखा हुआ है कि उस आदमी की रेस फॉर एग्जांपल वो रेस ए से बिलोंग करता है या किसी एक खास तबके से बिलोंग करता है और उस आपका जो जो फीचर इंपॉर्टेंस प्लॉट है वो कहता है कि ये रेस जो है इसकी ये सबसे हाईएस्ट इंपॉर्टेंस है इस बात की कि ये वापस कर देगा तो वो आपका मॉडल जो है वो not only racist, it's going to be inaccurate in a lot of ways because race is 
it cannot it should be uh, something which make sure that loan gets returned to the future importance plot karenge to aapko nazar aa jayega ki ye jo ye jo race ka plot hai ye sahi nahi hai okay aur aap usko ho sakta hai ki aapke data set ke hawale se sahi ho ho sakta hai ki data set mein aapke paas ek jo yellow color skin wale jo log hain wo loan wapas kar dete ho aur purple color skin wale log wapas na karte ho theek hai main aapko ek aisa example de raha hu to lekin iska matlab ye nahi hai ki agar purple wale jo purple color skin wale log hain वो उनको आप इस बात पर डिस्क्रिमिनेट करना शुरू कर दें उनकी वो फैक्टर्स देखे जाएंगे जो प्रोटेक्टेड एट्रीब्यूट नहीं है those techniques in detail uh, but uh, in a not shop chodi se mai samjha raha hu to shop if you are doing individual deep local model analysis to local model analysis karna hai to uske liye aap sharply values use karenge ki aapko individual level ke upar har feature ko samajhna ho aur explain karna lekin aap global models pe kaam kar rahe hain to lime works okay right lime explainers work okay. बट areas where you have you need require individual level explainability okay so then we have um, text data explainer hans and then image data can also use sharp so there are different type of explainers uh, if you have lp based data this han explainer and um explainers and then your kernel explainers as part of the sharp values and then you have image data image explainer um where you can use sharp as well for kernel explainer okay. so ai um these are some of the fairness algorithms for bias mitigation so some the person jayman was asking me earlier what are the different algorithms so you can use it optimize pre processing disparate impact remover equalize our pre process all of these algorithms are available as part of ibm ai 360 toolkit the github link is right here you can uh, go here and get it uh, all available built pre built for you and all of these algorithms are um it's just it's significant in one way or another and you can do this so one of the ones which i typically use are the uh disparate include uh, remover or optimized pre processing where it actually just takes and uh just it, it does a debiasing of that data and then you can use it to um use it to find out that there is no bias in the data set against a specific pro uh, protected attribute another great resource for interpretable machine learning you can download it for free it's available at the url listed above i interpretable machine learning excellent book and it talks about all these techniques and how to use them in very much detail right and these are some of the use cases where you may actually end up having uh, some sort of a uh, bias in the like demand forecasting or ad optimization or fraud analysis or preventative maintenance or credit scoring and all of these use cases require you to be able to make sure that you can apply the techniques i just discussed here and then take it out now is there one technique which can do everything no that's not true we have to have side based on whether you're doing local explanation or global explanation whether you have tabular data or you have textual data or image data or unstructured data and how can you do which do you need subject matter input as well so subject matter input is really important to be able to understand how you will uh, explain and mitigate the bias so for example was, when you showcase the breast cancer example i have been giving if you showcase the breast cancer example to a subject matter expert and tell them should we de bias the data then the person will say no there's no in de bias the data because the data is right and uh, the model is right because it is a female problem um for for most use cases it is it is a it has to be the bias thing but if you show it to a subject matter expert who is a financial institution then he will say no 
you probably don't, uh, you need to deal with this because that is a systematic racism problem. You need to address that. So there's a spectrum of this. Your regulatory agencies, financial institution, and risk, uh, those are much higher uh, on the spectrum where you have to have the model explainability in place. But if you have on the other side of the spectrum, the model explainability is much more important, right? So again, going back to how do you explain it? So you take the training data, then you train an interpretable model. So this is like a, an approach of proxy creation, all right? And you can uh, train also a black box model, right? So in this case, whether if you are training an interpretable model, then you get the global direct explanation. You get the local direct explanation built in. But if you have black box model, all right? So you are going this path down here. You see the black box model path. Then you can produce an interpretable model out of that, which is a proxy method to do things, okay? And you can evaluate a new test sample and generate a sample. So you can get the local post hoc explanation. There's post hoc explanation, and there is a, a pre-modeling uh, explainability, which means you can explain your model after the fact, or you can explain the model before the fact. So let me explain a little more about this. Explainability model has three different segments. One is you will pre-model explaining, so you, when you're building the model, you explain the data and then you do ETA on the data set, so data analysis. And that's where you find out the distribution of your data set and then figure out the, the data. If you have a quick example, you can see that you have a lot of data in the Xbox controller, which is a lot of data. There was a racism that was in the dark skin. डिफाइंड कर That will show you how you can build your models explainable. All right, it gives you a full detail on some of the things I've covered. 
but uh, some of the things you can also see that. Um, there's another one called a uh, data fact sheet, which is now becoming a part of most of the data sets which are coming out. And then you can, uh, you can see where the data was acquired from, uh, what is the distribution of data set look like? All of this data set are, are available now as a part of uh, most modern data sets. And that gives you an idea Thank you. 
Regarding to model interpretation or model accuracy, what if they have more values like more yeah. uh, more rich? Yeah, no, that's that's true. That that is a, a very good point. Okay, if your model, jo hai, for example, let's just say that you have a model that can predict very well. If you have put skin color, then you can predict it very well. Its accuracy is ninety nine point nine percent. Loan prediction. Ki. But that's 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 a 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 that's right because you have some ethical values and those ethical values are the ones which will drive your capability to be able to build a model so an ethical model cannot be used that's what governance is about governance you have a stereotype even, even though it, is, it costs the company any dollars even though it costs you like that's money. that's perfectly fine yeah because that's what the cost of governance is uh, in us uh, they have taken out all these uh, they are not selling any models to law enforcement 
तो डॉलर कॉस्ट तो है ना उसके ऊपर यानी यू यू डोंट सेल इट टू अ ह्यूज अमाउंट ऑफ पीपल अदरवाइज हर जगह जो है वो सर्वेलेंस कैमरास लगा के अगर वो डिटेक्ट करना शुरू कर देंगे पीपल ऑफ कलर और पीपल ऑफ रेस और एक आदमी जो है वो अगर टोपी जन पहन के जा रहा है तो वो जो है हो सकता है उसकी ज्यादा पोटेंशियल हो किसी और उसका तो ये तो बहुत खराब बात हो जाएगी ना अगर इफ समबडी स्टार्ट्स टू डू दैट रेशियल प्रोफाइलिंग द प्रॉब्लम इज इज यू हैव यू ब्रिंग अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पॉइंट एक्यूरेसी इज इंपॉर्टेंट बट एथिकल एआई इज इवन मोर इंपॉर्टेंट एथिक्स ऑफ व्हाट हु वी आर एज पीपल एज ह्यूमंस एंड हाउ वी डिफाइन एथिक्स इज दैट्स मोर इंपॉर्टेंट देन डॉलर्स एंड सेंट्स and i so think that bet on these two will go for the ethics of course of course you will always go for the ethical and governance in that case you will never use that if you if any company is found out to be using that agar ek company hai jo samajhti hai ki uska model bahut acha hai agar wo race ya gender ya faith ya aisi kuch istemal karti hai then they will be fined like billions of dollars literally like they will be extinct out of the industry agar ye find out ho jata hai na ki kisi ki aap biasing ho rahi hai ya kisi ko jo aisa wo kya ja raha hai uh based on that they they get fined a lot for example aapke example deta hu main aapko uh, amazon jab uh, prime uh, ke areas jab usne define kiya na ki kahan pe prime deliver hota hai to bosno the baaz jo the poor neighborhoods ko exclude kar diya gaya tha to uske upar i mean there was a huge out uproar they had to fix it right away because the algorithm might have said algorithm ne kahin bataya hoga ki yahan pe jo hai wo itni achhi sale nahi hoti yahan ye nahi hota to aap usko nikal de lekin uski jo कॉन्सिक्वेंसिस है वो ये है कि वो अफ्रीकन अमेरिकन नेबरहुड से या मेक्सिकन नेबरहुड से या ऐसे नेबरहुड से जहां पे अभी माइनॉरिटीज रहती हैं तो उसको निकालना जो है दैट्स नॉट एथिकल सो दे हैव टू पुट इट बैक एंड देन दे हैव टू फिक्स दैट होल मॉडल थैंक यू वेरी मच सर ग्रेट एनी मोर क्वेश्चंस questions comments concerns did i put you guys all to sleep uh, sir i think there aren't any more questions so i think we can move to uh, the conclusion part now okay. you can conclude yes you can conclude your talk all right i will conclude it then there's no more questions i think we are on time as well uh thank you very much um, i hope uh, the topic was interesting to you it's a up and coming topic in industry if you have any questions regarding ai machine learning you have my contact information feel free to reach out to me uh email me uh and i will love to answer your questions around this area any guidance you need around getting into ai machine learning data science i'm a practitioner and uh, i've worked this day in and day out i build models i lead a team of developers here in the us and i would love to answer any questions you have regarding your career path any kind of mentorship you need um i'm open to answer any of those questions if you have any further you want a deep dive in lime or shapley values or uh, building ai models in general i would love to talk to you thank you again for inviting me and uh, glad to be a part of this uh, event ji sir we would like to thank you on behalf of the acm student chapter lahore Uh, and we also would like to thank our advisor uh, mr mohammad afiz for making this event possible uh, sir we hope to see you more from you in the future and we have had a wonderful time uh, thank you for enlightening us with your knowledge and uh, we'll uh, see you in the future webinars have thank you sir assalam alaikum Okay everyone we are now going to uh, present the slides for our collaborators and we'd like to read some of their messages
Okay, the first one from our proud partners, uh, ACM Muhammad Ali Jannah University student chapter, and we're going. We are going to read the intro now. ACM Muhammad Ali Jannah University student chapter is one of the members of a vast network of student chapters working around the world under the umbrella of the Association of for Computing machinery acm right so the acm for machinery Compu uh, for computing machinery uh, the, the association for computing machinery is an international uh, learned society for computing it was founded in 1947 and is the world's largest scientific and educational computing society acm muhammad ali jinnah university's mission acm Muhammad Ali Jinnah student chapter seeks to spread passion in technology and computing by providing platforms where creative minds and big dreams are converted into illustrious careers uh, built on creativity, ideas and sheer hard work. Next. Uh, we, uh, so the no fear intro. Talent wins games, but teamwork and intelligence wins win championships. Once again, Muhammad Ali Jinnah University ACM has come up with the unique, exciting and adrenaline rush filled competition named No Fear, in which there will be co gaming competitions of uh, CS 1.6, PUBG, Call of Duty, Tekken and FIFA. But that's not it. There are also competitions for programming geeks and creative artists which includes uh, speed, uh, speed programming, debugging, web designing, and graphics designing. ACM events and glimpse. ACM Muhammad Ali Jinnah University student chapter is always hard at work to give back to the community by holding workshops, events, clinics, etc. We are always planning for expanding our scope and look beyond the horizon and how we can work for the welfare of the students. Currently, there are more projects coming, but here are some of the previous ventures that we have done. Fix the Skill 2.0, IRM and ACM Internship Program, Welcome Party Spring 2021, Fix the Skill, ACM League, ACM Clinics. Fix the Skill. Uh, with the first of our Fix the Skill workshop, we went with the highly in-demand game development route to give our peers an edge in the industry and help them grasp the skill with the help of highly trained instructor who have a real world industry experience. So not only they can get the skill, but have a guideline for working too. ACM League. ACM held a gaming league for our upcoming esports players where the, players, where the players showed tremendous talent and passion for their hobbies and engage in a nail-biting experience for the audience. Thanks. Once again, our proud partners, we in our proud partners, we have IEEE Women in Engineering, WIE, we uh, proudly welcome them first of all. Now, GCU ACM student chapter proudly announces its collaboration with uh, women uh, in engineering IEEE student branch, GCU Lahore for All Pakistan Tech and Art Festival 2021, WIE Women in Engineering is one of the largest international professional organizations dedicated to promote women engineers and scientists uh, WIE and IEEE arranges a number of activities, seminars and workshops throughout the year for the students of GCU Lahore. It has inspired many students, especially girls, to follow their academic interests and to excel in any engineering fields. All Pakistan Tech and Arts Festival 2021 aims to provide opportunities to students uh, to learn from some accomplished and experienced professionals. It will be an ideal opportunity to learn about the technological innovations going on in the world and to foster those, te uh, those learnings in our daily lives. This festival will keep the students updated about the academia, 
and will help the technological community of Pakistan to work hand in hand, sharing the same objectives and goals. Uh, this partnership will connect the students of Computer Science Department of GCU, motivating them to take part in different activities and inspiring them to connect with different technological innovations. It will promote shared learning goals and collaborations within the university. Next, we proudly welcome IEEE GCU student branch. IEEE Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers is the world's largest professional association strongly committed to the development and appraising of electronics and computer science standards. IEEE GCU student branch is contributing to the promotion of modern technological advancement in society and is an ex inclusive community for the students who are interested in tech and science and its mission is to foster technological innovation and excellence for the benefit of humanity. The de dedicated term of IEEE GCU student branch works tirelessly to promote close cooperation and exchange of technical information by engaging students in different technical activities. By webinars, workshops and panel discussions to create technological awareness. Also, GCU IEEE Women's WIE Women in Engineering is a wing which works under the IEEE. IEEE WIE wing is firmly determined to engage women with engineering and technological aspects. It is dedicated to promote women engineers and scientists and to inspire girls to follow their academic interests. Now we would like to play a video. So yeah, we'll, we'll play a video now. And uh, this video is from IEEE WIE, Women in Electrical Engineering. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for your presence. Now, I would like to, before we can get to attendance, I would like to announce that uh, I would like to announce that we, we we have another virtual workshop coming, which is titled Introduction to ASP.NET Core, and our guest speaker will be Mr. Bilal Shahzad. 